yeah, uh, Nathan here, and we are on the the day before the big vote for Kavanaugh, uh, and just want to give some a few of the lies that have come up uh, with uh, surfaced about Christine Ford, and I got got Roger here with me from the the founder of We the People's News, and. We're uh, we're just kind of uh, he put together a video here that 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 shows a couple of the big lies that that uh, that he has uncovered here, and uh, we just want to kind of walk through that stuff. So Roger, go ahead and take it away and uh, kind of take us through this. Well, within the first thirty seconds, Doctor Ford lies about being a psychologist, because being a psychologist means that you pass the licensing, just like an attorney would have to pass the bar. You can't call yourself an attorney if you didn't pass the bar. Mm-hmm. You've never passed, there's no record of licensing anywhere, which you point out in the slides and in an article on the People's News. Um, and right there is, a, once you start with the seat to make yourself look better, <laughs> that that's already a bad position for someone we have to take at their word. Right. Yeah. It. It. it and it, I knew when you first pawn in chess the wrong way, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, and then, you know, if she's, if she ha- is being misleading about that, then how can we trust anything she says? You know. Yeah. I mean, opening statement. She. Uh, Stanford. They uh, the Stanford. Here in the video shows that. In the archive version, she was, they, they had labeled her one, two, and they had since scrubbed the information right before this happened, of course. And who is the power? I mean, they have the power to do that, but she, they also, according to my, Mr. Savage, they um, scrubbed her yearbook off. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And that... now, who has the power to do that? <laughs> Gotta be the movers and shakers, don't it? It's, it's, um, yeah, Google, they own YouTube. Uh, they, they have the power to remove somebody you and I don't, do we? I mean, do you? Hey. No, no, no. It, it makes you wonder, you know, I'll why. we removed every day, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, how, how can you, how can you, uh, drill down and find the truth of these matters if, uh, if it's scrub? You want me to go ahead and bring the first clip up, Roger? Sure. Okay, let's, let's get it going here. Let's see. Yeah, up here in a sec. You you swear that the testimony you're about to give before this committee will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, uh, Chairman Grassley and Ranking Member Feinstein, members of the committee. My name is Christine Blasey Ford. I'm a professor of psychology at Palo Alto University and a research psychologist at the Stanford University School of Medicine. Okay, okay, Roger, got it stopped there. And uh, you, you showed after uh, her uh, introduction there what it said on the uh, university site and, and, and what it actually says now. So do you, you want to go through that a little bit? Well, they switched it to affiliate. Why would they do that? <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of flies in the face of what she said under oath, right? And she claims to, to give herself more credibility. That is why. Yeah. See, and that that in itself is deceit. Well, not only that, do, does it rise to the level of perjury right there? Yeah, I, I think it does. I mean, of course, it'd be nitpicking. I mean, but when you're trying to take down a man and his reputation, because, yeah, yeah, I've heard the liberals say that this is not... You know, a trial, but yeah, gee, this man is accused of any of crime. Right, right. Well, and and well, does, I beg to differ. I think that his right to presumption of innocence should rule at all. Exactly. Now, uh, another thing to consider here: does it speak to 
the reliability of this witness. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if she committed perjury swearing in, then again, it does say, so help me God, and, and, and uh, the, the democratic socialists don't seem to believe in a God, so what's the matter to that? Right, right. <laughs> Ab- absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so anything you want to say, uh, add on to that, or you want me to just keep going here? I might as well keep going. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, now I've got the slide up here, you know, saying what, uh, you know, what a graduate in psychology uh, that has attained the their doctorate, the the uh, uh, what they have to go through to uh, to actually be certified. Uh, process includes three thousand hours of postdoctoral professional experience, which. Uh, apparently she has not done, correct? So that's, uh, that there's no record of it. There's no record of her passing that test or being licensed. And in order to be, you know, like everything else, you have to be just like a lawyer, cannot practice law unless he's licensed. And in order to be licensed, you have to pass bar exams, the same in this. So, and she is in that field. She did graduate. Yeah. Just like someone graduated from law school but did not passed the bar exam. Now, one question is, why didn't she take this exam? Right. It's a good question that the Congress could have asked her, or the Senator. Right. Right. Absolutely. And, it wasn't uh, hard to find. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, at, at the very least, it sounds like uh, gross misrepresentation of of her her pedigree you know, her, uh, her accomplishments <laughs> and her title. Her, her... Who, uh, who, 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 everybody has a friend that lies to impress, puts that story a little bit, embellishes on it, tells a story that he was there when he wasn't. I have one. I don't talk to him much anymore, but yeah, I, yeah, everybody has that guy that lies to impress and you don't really trust him. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And, and it's like, you know, if, if you're trying to tell me that you're somebody that you're not, then, and, <laughs> And, you know, we're not talking about casual conversation here. <laughs> you know, we're, we're talking about uh, uh, sworn, so, sworn so, under under oath, you know, to tell the whole truth. It's a sales job that you have to sell yourself yeah. to be credible, but you can't use deceit when you're doing that. Well, no. No, especially when you're under oath. It's like, you know, you're a man. So how can we believe anything, she hey, says. No, no one's question. She may not personally, but the Democrats push for this. Then they push for the FBI investigation. Now they don't like the results of it, and they're claiming now all of a sudden the FBI is biased before they weren't. You know, Peter Stalk was a hero. Right. Absolutely. And it's a twist and turn any which way and throw it on the news, and I don't know. Some yeah. people just eat yeah. it up. There's a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of Americans that, I don't know, they can't think for themselves anymore or are too lazy to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so basically, right out of the gate, we got a big fat lie here, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it, it starts. Uh, it's like the premise of the whole thing because there's more lies in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so you're, you know, she's building her whole case or founda- foundation on on sand. So the okay. only time I really saw real truthfulness from her is when the chairman told her we were willing to come to you. You didn't know. Yeah. And it was like an actual surprise and shock look on her face. Imagine that. The Democrats didn't tell her more to speak. Why okay. didn't tell her? She, didn't, she was scared of fine, supposedly. Okay, and that, that kind of segues into the next part, so let, let's go on here and get, go to the next part. There we go. I didn't see any reason not to do it. Who are you talking 
advised to do that. Based on the advice of the council, I was happy to undergo the polygraph test, although I found it extremely stressful, much longer than I anticipated. I told my whole life story, I felt like, but I endured it, it was fine. Okay, so I remember being hooked up to a machine, like be being placed onto my body and uh, being asked a lot of questions. I understand you spent about an hour and a half to two hours with Dr. Ford in this process um, and only asked two questions. So these are the two questions that you, after she put together the statement and then you interviewed her, these are the two questions you asked. Is any part of your statement false? She said no. Did you make up any part of your statement? Her answer was no. Um, I remember being hooked up to a machine, like be being placed onto my body and uh, being asked a lot of questions. May I ask Dr. Ford, how did you get to Washington? In an airplane. Okay. It's, I asked that because it's been... Okay, let's stop it there. And, uh, and Roger, you, you want to speak to uh, the, the segment I, I just played there about... Uh, you know about the yeah. polygraph. She she said that uh, uh, you know we we, we heard it right on there. You were old me. First, you can't remember the day, but was the day of her grandma's funeral? It was not the day of her grandma's funeral. The day after, she after all, she spent the night. That's what that's what she said. Yeah. And I mean, you would if it was so stressful. She says later, and she keeps telling that point. It was so stressful. But yet, the interviewer says he only asked the two tough questions, and they weren't even tough. I mean, they were, and they weren't. But what's two questions? How can you you get a baseline only ask two questions? Well, yeah, yeah, and then and she said she, that's enough data to know if she's lying or not lying, and that's what you're basing it on. In all reality, is that enough data? I don't know enough about them to know. But I would, as a someone looking from the outside, wanting the truth, because that's what this should be about. This shouldn't be about Democrats grandstanding and saying they believe her accusations and thus it's fact. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when they claim to be prosecutors, because presumption of innocence is a, 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 is the basic of human life. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So. And it's unheard of proven. No one yet has been able to substantiate or corroborate their story. Even her lifelong friend didn't want to corroborate that story. But there seems to be more that's being dug up to show it is a conspiracy. Right. Oh wait, is that word? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Watch out. Uh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, oh, red flag going up. No, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, so you know, she she's under oath saying that she was asked multiple uh, questions, and this went on for quite some time. Um, you know, it seems yeah. quite quite clear that she's saying she was asked more than just two questions, right? Yeah, and, and if you listen to the interview with the guy, the whole thing, he, he also um, was called at the last minute. Had to change his schedule to get there and meet their needs. Yeah. And then she was leaving by plane the next day, which leads into the next segment, my friend. And and you know, from what I've heard, you know, they, they the the De Democrats are trying to hang their hat on this, but yet uh, they won't even uh, submit. From uh, what Senator Grassley said, they will they they've refused to even submit the polygraph test into into evidence in, into the record. I even, um, hold on a second, I'm trying to bring it up. Even what's crazier than that is the front door thing. Yeah. Because the front door wasn't, con it wasn't constructive when she said it was, according to Hot Air, and I, I find their um, article pretty, Pretty, um, they got the records, the building records and everything in it. I find it pretty credible. I can't find any errors in it, or I wouldn't use it. I've mm -hmm. never heard of them before, but I think what they said was solid. Okay. And if someone can refute it, go right ahead. <laughs> Be right. my guest. But right. Right. The records didn't show that the front door is because she continues to allow the person she bought the house from to run her marriage counseling office right outside her house to turn into... It wasn't for an escape route. The second front door was so someone could go into that office without going in the house. Well, the records show that. It's it's um, the name of the article. 
is Christine Blasey Ford's second door was for the marriage counseling office by Hot Air. Okay. So th- there... it's, I think it's a great article. I wouldn't bring it up, but there's right. something else that, because I heard a senator, I heard one of the Democratic senators say, you know, almost like because of that fear and using the front door, and thus she must be believed. Well, that's for one of them, what you believe, not what is fact. Right. You, so, what you believe is not fact, no matter how much a senator, senator the Democratic senator should have been after the truth, just like Republican conservatives. They right. all should have been after the truth, because that's what's important here. Right. So, so, so the second door was was actually needed for a a, a particular func- functional reason, oh. right? Also, in the article, talks about see how Google interns there. Now, that's interesting since Google, who wiped off her hand, her yearbook, because no one else could wipe it off Google but Google. I mean, that's self-evident. Yeah. And they also have an intern here. They also had a machine against Hillary Clinton, or for Hillary Clinton against Donald Trump, which we have reported about Fox News has touched on, and, and also, I believe, Breitbart and David Collard, one of the two. But we reported, we even showed the email, $1.5 billion. Yeah, a yeah. monster of an organization that Google put together for Hillary to win the election, and they lost. Yeah. Just that amazing amount that they're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that's... that's uh, that's, that's a, too much money to contribute, see? But she didn't claim this, but yeah, here's the emails. There's good videos now. Um... Yeah, it's just pretty interesting. So that that so that amounts to a very very large in kind contribution to to Hillary's campaign. Then. Yeah. Now, now they share the wealth through the open uh, the open um they they also share the wealth. Right. Because uh, George Soros and he's got a shadow group called the um, Open Society Foundation. I, I'm I got a story out about. I, I'm, I'm working on a story on them that they are demand justice, and that's left over from Hillary and the Obama yeah. campaign, which really is them adding on for putting the light. They're yeah. the ones financing this. And his one 501c4 that's supposed to be non political, just in one quarter in 2016, gave $14 million to groups around, around the country that I went through and, and Googled, and they're all left wing progressive groups. Okay. Now, how is that nonpartisan for against the candidate? For as they if they use them like a weapon. Okay. Yeah. There's many of them out there. It's like a web. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's. Uh, uh, not a people it just gave me a headache. Right. Right. Okay. Well. Well. So far on the video, we've uh, <laughs> don't have a real good uh, bat and zero so far. It looks like uh, Mrs. Ford, uh, from what we're seeing, <laughs> you know, in the video. But, uh, yeah, I mean, these are just, there's, there's other, I mean, other people have put out good stuff about this, but we're all labeled fake news because we don't agree with what well, and then saying, yeah, even though we but, get them so many lies that we can show you, right. we still believe. It's well, just amazing to me. Well, not only that, but the... Like, this in my face and tell me it's raining, you know? Yeah. That's, that's, that's well, and... They and, have a lot of media to do to them. And, and because of the seriousness of the charge, we're not really supposed to look at the facts anyway, are we? And, and this is just a job interview, right, Roger? I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah of course. You're not supposed to look at the facts, just, just their accusation. That's all, you know, presumption of innocence, of innocence be damned. Well, and it's like... Uh, Lord, I hope that one day they're in there for deposition. And one of their family members were, people want to get rid of the presumption of innocence. And we'll see how much they cry about their right then. Or somebody comes after them personally, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right doing... to like a muscle, my friend. Yep. The more you yep. exercise them, the stronger they become. Uh, the vice versa is true. Exactly. The more you exercise your legs, they get weak and brittle. Okay, so, well, uh, you know, if you're if you're pulling for uh, Ford's team here, as far as the uh, uh, the truthfulness, it's not looking so good so far on this video. <laughs> so... No, no. Now remember, she couldn't come on right the way because her fear of flying. I'm gonna okay. Go okay. Well, that that. Now we're ready to move on to that part. So let, let's go ahead and the attack. That's her fear of flying. She testified to it. Okay, let, right. let, let's go ahead and play that then. Here we go. Okay. Reported by the press that you would not submit to an interview with the committee because of your fear of flying. Is is that true? Well, I was willing. I was hoping that they would come to me, but then I realized that was an unrealistic request. It's not something that I 
I'm saying that you stated wrongly because you may not know the fact that when when you said that uh, you didn't think it was possible for us to go to California as a committee or our investigators to go to California to talk to you, uh, we did, in fact, uh, offer that to you, and we had the capability of doing it, and we would have done it anywhere or any time. So I Thank you. Thank you. to get on an airplane, but I eventually was able to uh, get up the gumption with the help of some friends and get on the plane. It's, I ask that because it's been reported by the press that you would not submit to an interview with the committee because of your fear of flying. In fact, you fly fairly frequently for your hobbies and your You've had to fly for your work, is that true? Correct, unfortunately. Um, you you were a consulting biostatistician in Sydney, Australia, is that right? I've never been to Australia, but the company that I worked for is based in Australia, and they have an office in San Francisco, California. Okay. I don't think I'll make it to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> it is long. Um, I also saw on your CV that you list the following hey, interests of surf <laughs> travel, and you, in parentheses, uh, put Hawaii, we'll Costa Rica, Hawaii, South Pacific, Pacific Islands, and French Polynesia. Have you been all to those places? Uh, okay. Correct. Okay. Why, airplane? Yes. And your interests also include oceanography, uh, Hawaiian, and Tahitian culture. Did you yeah, travel by air as a part of those okay. interests? Okay. But we'll try to wind, to try to wind it up quick because it's running low. Okay, okay, just a second. I'll stop it here. Wait a minute. Direction when it's a vacation. Okay. Oh, there you have it. You want to buy at the end, you try to sell real quick. You know, it's easier to go that way because it's on vacation. Well, that's selling a lie also. I mean, you got caught up in a big lie here. Okay, so, I mean... I, if, I know if, this, that they delayed it because of this reason. Why did they delay it? Oh, more accusations came out that now, that's been reported today, that uh, the FBI said that Ramirez's exact, er, accusation is not reliable. Okay. That's the FBI. The, the FBI they didn't want them involved. Now they made it official. Right. They're fools. Right. Um. That the, so that's the reason to delay it. Not because she was scared of violence. Uh, she had to be coached to get on a plane, like she testified to come there. Why did she? Why doesn't she have to be coached to get on a plane to go on vacation? They got to be there well, at the airport. Uh, isn't the whole idea of going on vacation to have fun and enjoy yourself? I mean, if you're scared to death to fly, um. How fun of a vacation would that be? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean... It's, it's beyond logic, you know? And, yeah, yeah. and this is all based on emotion. Oh, we should believe her. Oh, you don't believe. What's the first response? You don't believe in sexual abuse. Oh, well, I have a whole different story. Personal one you can read on Be the People's News. Yeah. Of my daughter going to and fighting liberals. Because they don't care about everybody's sexual abuse. Only ones that can score political points on well, this yeah. Might be a good place to end it today, my friend. Yep. Sounds good, Roger. Okay. Well, well, thanks well, for uh, thanks for coming on, buddy, and uh, we'll we'll it's we'll pick. On the truth train. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Th thanks a lot for coming on, and we'll uh, we'll get back with you on other things later. So. No problem. Have a good one. You too. Okay.